Okay, so I'm picking up where I left off on my last video. I was talking about GMO food, and that's the way they would change the instructions in the food, and then water, they poison the water. So these are all different ways of explaining the way that men corrupt things and choose darkness rather than light. So in that same figure, light is the right way of things, and darkness is the wrong way of things, good, evil right and wrong, order and disorder. So there's, as I was saying, civilization is a corruption of coexisting with nature. GMO is a corruption of the correct genetic information in food because we have organic molecules in us and we need the correct instructions to be in the food for us to be healthy. And, and poisoning the water, obviously that's not gonna help our body because we have buffers in our body and it messes up those systems so splitting an atom atoms fuse together for a reason splitting them has done an awful lot of bad things on the earth and so I won't go too much in this again but I changed my background picture so I want y'all to see this this was actually a picture on the news of what happened to the sun. And the reason I'm showing you this is because most people have been taught that the sun is just a giant fireball. Well, no one believes that the, the sun is just a giant fireball. In fact, people don't know exactly what the sun is. So this is a good picture of what the inside of the sun looks like because this electromagnetic force that the sun emits well part sometimes the sun will actually give off these huge gigantic eruptions from the top of it so this is what happened here which was an amazing event that they captured there so I'm gonna to read to you a little bit more about that from Killen Delish it says The first thing created by the divine word was light, the elementary light or light material in, in distinction from the lights or light bearers, bodies of light as the sun, moon, and stars created on the fourth day are called. It is now a generally accepted truth of natural science that the light does not spring from the sun and stars, but that the sun itself is a dark body and the light proceeds from an atmosphere which surrounds it. Wow, that's amazing. If you do a little more reading up on the sun, you'll see a little bit more about those things. So, as I said, we're talking about darkness versus light. So darkness is a it is it conceals like when the the word truth actually means to take the cover off. So you remove the things that conceal our occult our vision of the truth. Okay. So the next scriptures that I wanted to read, it says, We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So as it says there, the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. And we can see that same picture in Genesis chapter 1 when he causes the stars to appear. So the stars were there. He just causes them to appear. And I'll actually, if I remember, I'm going to try to do an explanation from a book that explains some of the wording of the Hebrew and how they translated it. So you can see that he caused them to appear, that they weren't made on the fourth day. So, And I'm going to read that to you now. It says, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, and now we're fast forwarding. It says, and God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, which is the sun, and the lesser light to rule the night, which is the moon. He made the stars also, and God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. 
and God saw that it was good in the evening and the morning or the fourth day. So what we're going to look at now is we're going to look at just the common sense of the scripture, which so amazingly avoids people, and they come up with these strange theories like flat earth, or they'll come up with um, geocentricity, and people will argue about these facts. Now, just from a common sense view, the Bible speaks from the objective of perspective, not well, we're these genius scientists and we put these space probes up in the air and now we know that the sun is the center of the universe and, you know, that kind of thing. The, the Bible is very commonsensical. So right here it says, I'll just start from here. It says, mentioned in their completion on the fourth day when for the first time they assumed or were placed in such a position with regard to the earth as to influence its development may be explained on the simple ground that it was the intention of the sacred historian to describe the work of creation from the standpoint of the globe. That's how we perceive things, common sense, and our simple perspective of how we view the earth. It looks like the sun rises and the stars come up and then go down. It appears that the earth is flat, but that doesn't mean that there's not the actual way that those things are behaving and what they actually do as well. You have to be able to differentiate what is mathematical and and is actually for real, like the Earth does go around the sun, but you also have to be able to see it from the perspective of Earth because it appears that the sun and the stars go around the Earth. So. It goes on to say, in other words, as it would have appeared to an observer from the earth. There you go. If there had been one in existence at the time. For only from such a standpoint could this work of God be made intelligible to all men, uneducated as well as learned. And the account of it being made subservient to the religious wants of all. Okay. So I read this one to you already about the sun. All right, so in the same perspective we're speaking up here because so many people are in the darkness, they'll actually say that the Old Testament doesn't matter anymore, which is absurd because Jesus even expounded to them from the beginning to the end of what of everything in the Old Testament that spoke of him. And plus the first Christians didn't have a New Testament. The New Testament wasn't written until much later. So I want to go ahead and read you this. And the things that I've been reading here about the song and about the perspective there, this has been from Killing the Leash. So it says, The Old Testament is the basis of the new. God, who at sundry times in a diverse manner spake unto the fathers by the prophets, has spoken unto us by his only begotten Son. The body of Christ is built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. For Christ came not to destroy the law or the prophets, but to fulfill as he said to the Jews, search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. So also a short time before his ascension, he opened the understanding of his disciples, that they might understand the scriptures, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, expounded of, unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself, with firm faith in the truth of this testimony of our Lord, the fathers and teachers of the church, of the body of Christ in all ages, have studied the Old Testament scriptures and have expounded the revelation of God under the Old Covenant, covenant in learned and edifying words, unfolding to the Christian community the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God which they contain and impressing them upon the heart for doctrine, for reproof, for improvement, for instruction in righteousness. It was reserved for the deism, naturalism, and rationalism which became so prevalent in the closing quarter of the 18th century to be the first to undermine the belief in the inspiration of the first covenant and more and more to choke up this well of saving truth so that at the present day depreciation of the holy scriptures of the Old Testament is as widely spread as ignorance of what they really contain. At the same time, very much has been done during the last 30 years on the part of believers in divine revelation to bring about a just appreciation and correct understanding of the Old Testament scriptures. May the Lord grant his blessing upon our labors and assist with his own spirit and power, a work designed to promote the knowledge of his holy word, C.F. Kiel. So this is from the Kiel and Leash Commentary of the Old Testament. 
So I also wanted to read this as well in context to how important the Old Testament is and how it all speaks of Christ. So it says, This is not the case with the Old Testament only, but in the New Testament also it is accepted and taught by Christ and the apostles as the basis of the divine revelation to select only a few from the many passages of the Old and New Covenants in which God is referred to as the creator of the heavens and the earth and the almighty operation of the living God in the world are based upon the fact of its creation. In Exodus 20, 9-11 and 31, 12-17, the command to keep the Sabbath is founded upon the fact that God rested on the seventh day when the work of creation was complete. And in Psalms 8 and Psalms 104, the creation is depicted as a work of divine omnipotence in close adherence to the narrative before us from the creation of man as described in Genesis 127 and 224 Christ demonstrates the indissoluble character of marriage as a divine ordinance in Matthew 19 verses 4 through 6 Peter speaks of the earth as standing out of the water and in the water by the word of God 2 Peter 3 5 and the author author of the epistle to the Hebrews starting from Genesis 2 2 describes it as the mode of principle of all history that the Sabbath of God is to become the Sabbath of the creature. And Delish wrote that. So what it's speaking of is how we're still in the seventh day. We enter into that rest when we believe and people could not enter into the rest because of their unbelief. So we have entered into that rest when we believe in Christ and we understand that every day is the day that you worship God, not just certain days and the observing of days as it says in Colossians. It says, um, let no man therefore judge you in meat and drink or in respect of the holy days or in Sabbaths or new moon feasts. It says these are the shadows of things that come, but the body is the very image. Okay, so we've read this. We've read this. All right, so we've covered that. Let me go through them one more time and make sure. All right. So we've the point here that I'm explaining to you, so when the scriptures speak of stars, it's oftentimes speaking of the revelation since they were revealed in, in day four. Now, another way of saying that is when the, the scriptures say morning star. So we talk in morning star. Christ says he'll give you the morning star in Revelation 2.28. And then in Revelation 22.16, he says, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the body of Christ. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. So he'll give us a piece of himself. And the body together is what makes up the body of Christ. Together. <clears throat> okay. So we've covered this, and this is all in the context, remember, of how we know that, let me, let me open this actually so I can remember how he says it. So he says, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. And that was this, I just read this right here. So interestingly enough, we know that people have come to believe that what you see is all there is. That's called naturalism and materialism, as we showed in Philip Johnson and in his book, Defeating Darwinism, and also in The Devil's Delusion, Military Atheism and Its Scientific Pretensions by David Berlinski, because people have to pretend like they know everything in order to keep you deceived but if you just know how to ask some rigorous questioning you'll find that they pretend a lot more than they actually know anything so I, I am amazed that in these times that we're in through advancements in microscopy as Michael Behe says in Darwin's Black Box and advancements in like the Hubble telescope we see these things, we see deeper into these very mysterious things as DNA is and as the subatomic particles are and the inner workings of the atom with all their different subatomic particles. So 
it's, I feel like it's a way of God showing us that the things that you can't see regulate the things that are seen. And it's just incredible. It's amazing that God has shown us these things. And this would also relate to the Uma, the Urim and Thummim, which means lights and perfections. So if we were to go and open up Blue Letter Bible and we were to type in Urim and Thurim and define these things, which I'm about to for you. Oh, let me see. So Urim and Thummim. If you look at these, it means lights and perfections. So as we see in Psalm 19, it says that even the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth forth his handiwork. So Urim means, as we just said, lights. And Thummim, we'll see. Thummim. Oh, sorry, I'm just going to click back. And click on Thummim, and it means perfections. And perfections mean maturities or completions. So these were two stones that were stuck in the high priest's breastplate. So I'm going to do a quick draw here. Actually, I'll just type it in. So I'm going to go to Genesis chapter 1. And we see that light was mentioned five times in Genesis chapter 1. So <clears throat> if you were to count the amount of times light is used here, and not in all of Genesis chapter 1, but right here, is mentioned five times. So let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so, and then if we go to John chapter 1, it uses light seven times seven times and the, the seventh time is the verb form so he, right here he speaks of the the light so let me see one two three four five and then the verb form or so I skipped one okay six right here sorry and then seven or my bad, sorry. So it's it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we go. The seventh one is it's actually fotidzo. So let's look at that. And that would obviously be synonymous with the old testament word that was used there in Genesis chapter one. Phos. Light to give light, to shine, to enlighten. And this is the verb, you see. So that is fotidzo. So if we click phos here, and down here it would show us everywhere that or that's mentioned. And then right here, we'll click phos, and then if we look here, it'll show us every place where it's mentioned. So we could scroll down to John here. And we see, like I, like I was showing you, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the seventh was Fotidzo. Okay, and we can see that down here because it'll show us John, right? So John. And this is how you do word studies. You go through and see everywhere where it's mentioned. So, okay. All right, so let's do a quick wrap-up, okay? So what we were just studying, what we're looking at, is the explanation that darkness will intentionally make us want to to be evil because of the darkness that works in the world and light is actually looking at how things actually operate it gives light it shows us orders it shows us processes while darkness attempts to cover up these things like for example the fact that people don't know exactly what the sun is and the incredible complexity of the machinery in the cell and the incredible complexity of the matter, energy, and space and time and the things like that that are we see in, in the large spectrum and the small spectrum of universes and atoms and like solar systems and these different things that we observe in, in the material realm. So the pretense is that there is no supernatural and that there is no 
metaphysical, but that is the premise and that is the the prerogatives of the person who is studying it. So you have two worldviews, and that goes in the light and darkness. People who believe in God and understand the complete science cover-ups and the people who don't believe in God and they intentionally cover up the gaps in their theories and the nonsense that they are trying to put forward because they are trying to always ensure that there's a social class of of rich and poor and that there is a gap there so that the poor people won't learn and put together these pieces and actually be able to have a program in their head of how to introduce a piece of knowledge and where it fits into the grand scheme because then you become too much of a powerful learner and you don't want powerful learners on the earth who can manage. You want people who will be like a machine who just will function for you. So they don't want people to be learners, which is what disciple means. So if you are a disciple, you are a learner. And every Christian is a disciple, contrary to that silly saying, which is every... Um, I, I can't... I can't remember how it goes. It's like every disciple is a Christian, but not every Christian is a disciple. That's like got to be the dumbest thing that anyone's ever one of one of the dumbest things, right? But it's just important for us to learn so we can understand, so people don't think for us. And it's as Helen Keller said in her book Midstream. Or I can't actually. I'm sorry. I can't remember where the quote's from, but she says that people don't like to think because when you think, you have to draw conclusions, and conclusions are not always pleasant. So let us learn to, as as William Dembski has said, to eliminate chance through small probabilities and look at all of these small probabilities, whether it's the the universe, or the cell, or the the subatomic world, and look at these probabilities and see that because they're so small, we know that there's greater orders and there's greater perfections, the um, the urim and the thurum, the thumim, and know that people don't know everything and that it's important to study these things so you can see that there is a war in this world between the children of light and the children of darkness, the holy and the profane, darkness and light. And I really like the way I heard someone say it one time is that if there's a thousand if there's thousands or a billion year old angel roaming around the planet whose name is the old serpent, the red dragon, or the fiery serpent, is what Dracon means to fascinate. And people know how to use music and how to use lights and how to use movement and these sounds to manipulate you in these eloquent speeches. And that's attributed to the inner working of the power of Satan, who's an archangel, and he's way far more experience as far as like being very very old right that you might want to at least know a little as the scripture says my people perish from lack of knowledge and then again and Peter he, one of the things that you add to your faith he says is knowledge he says add to your faith virtue to virtue knowledge to knowledge patience to patience temperance to temperance godliness to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness charity the seven things that you add to faith. And just learn the the the, the different questions to ask in order to, to get a better understanding of the agendas that people are coming to you from. So it it just it helps and if you if y'all ever have questions, ask me. 
If you ever would like some copies of the resources that I'm using, let me know. I could try to send you some of these folders of information, or I can try to help you out with some studies, or just contact me and let me know. So, all right, y'all take it easy, and thanks again for watching. And this is part two of my other video that I did on this topic.